Unlike a grand piano, an upright piano is vertical, so you can place it against a wall. Uprights come in various heights. The taller ones have longer strings and a larger soundboard, so their sound is closer to that of a grand piano. Around four feet tall, this is the largest upright piano on the market. It's designed for those who lack the budget or space of a grand piano. A piano technician spends several days calibrating the pre-assembled action stack. It has 88 wooden hammers with heads wrapped in felt. Pressing a piano key causes the corresponding hammer to strike a particular string. The string vibrates, producing a specific musical note. A damper stops the string vibration a split second later, ending the sound. Each key has two slots called mortises. They are lined with a felt bushing to protect the wood from wear. At the back of each key, there's a height adjustment rod called a capstan. Each key has an embedded lead disc. This disc equalizes the pressure that's needed to play an individual key. Without this pressure equalization, you would have to press harder on the bass keys because their hammers and strings are heavier. The soundboard is already installed in the piano cabinet under a cast iron frame. The technician checks the clearance between soundboard components. He verifies that each steel string is properly wound to a tuning pin at the top, loops over a hitch pin at the bottom, and passes over a wooden bridge in between. After making necessary adjustments, he measures the pressure of each string over the bridge, a critical factor for producing fine tone. Then he tunes below the bridge, adjusting string tension as needed. The technician assembles the keyboard by aligning each key with corresponding pins on the keyframe. He uses round spacers called punchings to equalize height so the black and white keys are level. He checks the tightness of each key's bushings. If a key needs to be loosened, he compresses the bushing and widens the mortise. Then he installs the action stack directly above the keyboard, attaching it to bolts mounted on the cast iron frame. He presses each key a few times to make sure it functions properly. If it doesn't, he adjusts the capstan to better strike the key. Then he connects the pedals to the components they control. The right pedal pulls the dampers away from the strings to let the sound continue. The left pedal draws the hammers closer to the strings, which reduces the volume of the sound. Then, several more calibrations. Each hammer to make sure it moves correctly. Each back check so that it doesn't rebound and strike again. And finally, each key is checked to ensure that the pressing depth is identical across the keyboard. If a key needs adjustment, he adds or removes punchings. They come in a range of thicknesses from heavy felt to ultra-thin tissue paper. He plays with different combinations until the pressing depth is perfect. Now he strikes a tuning fork to sound an A and tunes the corresponding A key. Then he tunes all the other keys in relation to that note, tweaking each tuning pin with a special wrench. An assembler completes the piano by mounting the remaining sections of the cabinet. This cabinet is made of wood and laminates, coated in high-gloss polyester resin, an elegant yet simple exterior enclosing very complex internal workings.